Hello and welcome to everyone attending today's webcast for eJournals for Community Colleges. Provide users with what they really need, sponsored by Wiley and EBSCO. I'm Steve Odell, Vice President, Subscription Services Division of EBSCO Information Services, and I'll be the moderator for today's webcast. We have an engaging session planned for today, but before we go any further, I have a few housekeeping items to go through with you. But first of all, the session is now being recorded. A link to this recording will be available for you in a few days after the webinar, and we'll share it with you via email. Second, all attendee lines are now muted to avoid any sound feedback or interruptions. If you're having technical difficulties during any part of this webinar, please use the chat box to communicate with me and we'll try to resolve your issues. We thank in advance for keeping your line muted during our session. Third, there'll be a time for Q&A following the presentation. If you do have questions, feel free to enter them into the chat box at any time during the presentation to me directly. Once again, I'm Steve Odell. Finally, please stay on the line once the webinar has finished and you will be able to request more information on eJournals for community colleges. So now without any, any further ado, I would like to introduce the speakers. First of all, we have uh, Ali Barciella, Customer Success Training Manager at Wiley. Ali is a Customer Success Training Manager for John Wiley. Currently manages a global training program for Wiley Research. Previously, she worked as a product manager, Wiley Researcher Academy, and marketing manager for Audible. During her 10 years at Wiley, Ali also worked as an editor and project manager for textbook and online courses. We also have with us today Mary Margaret Fay, who is our who is EBSCO's customer engagement manager. Mary Margaret works and has worked in the information industry for more than 20 years and has extensive knowledge about subscription services and products and ensures customers are well informed of additional services and products that complement the overall value of EBSCO products that they currently utilize. So at this point, I will begin by turning the presentation over to Ollie. Thank you so much, Steve. Um, my name is Ale Barciela. Uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you for making the time. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so that I can share with you some slides. Um, today, I'm going to be using a combination of slides and also moving into the live environment. So, um, what I have prepared for you today, just bear with me. There you go. What I have prepared for you today, it's an overview of the Wiley Online Library. I want to bring to your attention, in case you're not very familiar with it, um, uh, an idea of the content that you can access um, to through the Wiley Online Library, and also some of the benefits. The benefits from different type of individuals and personas, like, um, and, and, and including for you. And we're also going to move to the demo, um, actually using the live environment do a couple of searches together today so that you get more acquainted and familiarized with the search experience. I'm going to show you some relevant resources about coronavirus and COVID-19 that are now freely available to any users, uh, regardless of your subscriptions, and I hope they're useful to you um, at this time. Um, and I'm also going to show you uh, some other things and functionalities like citation tools, how to cite content, how to narrow down your search filters to find the information that you need, um, and also where to find help. So, um, a couple of notes about content. Um, we have a, a wide uh, variety of subjects within the Wiley Online Library. So, um, as you can see here on the screen, we have a mix of subjects, uh, from law and criminology to computer science and health sciences, uh, psychology, and others. So hopefully you're able to find the information that you want here um, across this universe of content. Moving to the benefits uh, for users of the Wiley Online Library. Well, uh, the first immediate benefit for, for a user would be the ability to look up high quality scientific content related to keywords or topics. So I know nowadays we have a lot of information on the internet. If you Google something, you can find a lot of results, but um, be questionable the quality that uh, some of that content uh, would have. 
So definitely there's a guarantee that all the content that um, exists and lives within the Wild Yola Library has been peer reviewed um, and, and can be reliable uh, research or your studies. Next immediate benefit would be the ability to cite content um, experts. So this is something that you can rely on and build on to support um, your ideas. This also allows you to stay with what is published in your area of interest. Um, so if you are an expert or if you're, a, a, if you're teaching, if you're preparing a presentation, this is going to allow you to position Self as such expert um, and being knowledgeable about, about what's being published about a particular specific topic. Um, you can also discover new trends and content that may help you define your own development. Um, so just by, by staying informed and seeing the type of content that is being published, uh, you can educate yourself and, and you, what content is interesting to the audience today. Um, and to editors and to different journals. Um, if somebody is interested in eventually publishing work, this could be an excellent way of trying to define a project um, or define a topic, even if it's just for a um, simple communication. It could also be um, uh, an interesting tool. And of course, this is just a great tool to projects, scientific communications, lectures, presentations, anything. Um, eventually, this uh, this is a way to advance your career, student, researcher, or professional. All right. Um, having very quickly covered the content and the um, benefits, I'm just going to move to the live demo. Uh, these are some of the things that we're going to see together today. So, just how to browse by topic, how to how to run a um, simple search and use different filters. I'm also going to show you how to cite and explore solutions, how to set up certain alerts, which can be useful and save you a lot of time. Um, you're also going to see how to access the latest content and see content that has been published in early view, and a very quick overview of the admin area. So just bear with me. Okay, uh, this is the homepage of the Wiley Ola Library. Uh, here we are, and uh, you may see some differences, or you may land. Um, Access this content in different ways, but the homepage itself uh, should also look very similarly. Um, in this page, you can see very clearly feature the search bar. So this is what we using to run any searches. And further below, you can see the search button uh, that is going to uh, to build a more complex type of search with multiple keywords, etc. Um, I also want to point out that. Uh, additional resources and videos. So if you see under researchers or under librarians, the third item, uh, find training and resources, if you click there, um, you're going to have to access the Wiley Online Library Training Hub. This is a new page um, that uh, was launched last October. And here you can find assets like the user guide. You also have a designated site for librarians with Rater resources that I'm just going to access right now. Um, so here, more specifically, you can find the admin guide, the usage reporting guide, um, the tokens guide, in case you're using that, um, the administrator dashboard video, also access to technical support, and other resources. A new video here about Counter 5 reports. Um, so as new features and changes take place in the platform, this is a way to stay educated. Um, as an administrator. And the same for users, right? Uh, users are going to have the ability to go to this help page and find resources like how to create an account, how to log in, um, or how to set up content alerts. Some of the things that we're going to see together today, uh, they have the ability to go back to this page and revisit those. All right. Um, so going back to the homepage of the Wiley Online Library, um, if I scroll down this page, I can see the subjects. So, um, subjects, it's a great way to start if you, for those users that are new and they maybe don't know what they're looking for, um, it could be a nice way of exploring the content. So, you could come here to business, for instance, 
and then um, run a search related to business and management. And immediately as you click there, uh, you're going to have a number of suggestions. Like I can see a number of um, words here and keywords and I could click um, human resources. And then I would have a number of results here. Um, so while the page loaded, loads, I, um, I can see that I have 82 results here related to human resources or human resource management. I could filter, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and filter by journals because it's what's relevant for us today. And here I would have the ability to see a number of journals that are related to uh, this topic. So it's always important to familiarize yourself and use the filters on the left side because this is what's going to allow you to narrow down your search and find the information you want. Um, again, in this case, I didn't even type any keywords. I was just using the browsing section or the subject area on the homepage to again familiarize myself with the type of content that I could be accessing to if I if I wanted. I'm just going to demonstrate a regular search right now. Um, if I want to go back to the homepage, I can click on the logo in the top left corner. And this is going to take me straight uh, where I was. And here, um, again, I'm just going to run a search on coronavirus. And click search. So in this case, I can see that I have 5,000 results related to coronavirus. Um, I just want to mention that uh, Wiley is making available a number of um, content, these 5,000 um, articles are available to you, regardless of your subscriptions, are available um, for free just to be able to support you during this um, moment. So I hope that you find this helpful. And definitely 5,000 results is a lot. So again, you may want to go back to those filters and, and use those filters to find the content that you want. Um, on the filter side, we can filter by publication type, also by date. So I can see that only last week there were 57 new results related to this particular topic, which is really excellent. It's a lot of new content about relevant topics that is being published um, every day. Um, then I could also filter by subjects. So this is a very nice way of exploring a topic through a different lens or angle. And further down, I could also um, filter by journals. So if I'm interested in a particular journal for any reason, I could go ahead and filter. In this case, what I'm going to do is um, a couple of more things that I could do here on the top of the page is sort out by relevance, which is normally by default, or by date. So I'm just going to choose date. And this is going to um, arrange all the content chronologically within my results page. So I can see that I have a concise communication here that was published just yesterday about this topic. And further down, I can see other research articles. Um, this one, again, was just published yesterday. So I'm just going to choose uh, this one on um, COVID-19 and coronavirus and take a closer look. Once you open an article page, you're always going to find the same elements, right? So at the very top, I can see clearly feature the journal um, that published this particular article, which is the Journal of Medical Virology. I can also see on the right side a link to the um, uh, well accepted articles. So this is this is an article that, um, as you can see below the title, we we can see the names of the authors and then the date of publication and the DOI, right? And then below we can read this article has been accepted for publication and undergone full peer review but not being through typesetting, pagination, and some, some processes. Um, so this is uh, very, very recent content that may undergo some type of formatting uh, transformation. But um, we wanted to put this out there because it was really necessary. Um, so you may find um, early view content uh, similar to this. Um, here, there's always, again, the same type of elements you're going to find, the name of the authors, the corresponding authors. If I want to cite this, um, you can go to the tools section. And here um, you're going to be able to click on export citation. And this will take you to a separate page where I can clearly read how to cite this. So I could just simply go ahead and copy paste this. And that way I don't have to uh, be worried about the best way uh, to cite this. 
or even for those who are working with software management tools, etc. Um, you would have the ability to download this citation in different formats uh, or different type of imports. And you have a number of tips on the right side of the screen, as you can see, that would give you more information about downloading a citation. Let's go back to the previous page. Um, a couple of other things that you could do with any given article would be accessing the PDF version. So I could just click here on the PDF um, and access the PDF version or also sharing. Um, if you want to share this with any colleagues or users want to share this with other users, you can just share a link um, through different social media or email. Also on the right side, you're always going to be able to read some information about the metrics to give you an idea of how many times this has been shared or tweeted in this case or shared in other social media or communications or Mendeley um, to kind of measure the impact, you know, how, how read or how cited a content is being. Um, and then further below, I may have like some keywords that could help me uh, find additional content. This is all hyperlinked. So if I click here, it's going to run a new search, right? Um, so this is a nice functionality to continue uh, to research content. Just very quickly going back to this page, um, I could also find some related content on this on this particular screen as well. All right, um, let me find a different example for you to showcase a couple of extra functionalities. So here I could run another search, let's say for climate change. I want you to notice that I'm putting my two words between quotation marks. Uh, that's a best practice when you're looking for one more one. Um, like two words or more, um, you may want to put that in between quotation marks because that's a way to make sure that those words are going to stay together in your search results. Um, so I'm just going to click here. As you can see, I also have a number of um, articles and, and content related to this topic, which is again very trendy and very relevant today. I could go ahead and click on journals on the left side and filter. And I could also go and see what has been published in the last month. I could filter by publication date. And again, only uh, already like a thousand results related to climate change uh, published in the last month. Um, here, I may want to again sort out by, by date. And that way I can see that I have some content that um, is as recent as yesterday, today. This is early view type of content. And if I click here, uh, let's explore this content. Uh, this article, for instance, again, I can see the, uh, the journal it belongs to. I can see some information here. And the abstract, etc. So we consistently see the same elements. Um, let's go back to the search page. A couple of interesting things you could do here. If this is a search that you do very often, um, you may want to save this in order to get notifications. I'm going to narrow down my search a little bit more. So I'm just going to click here on advanced search, do an extra thing. Um, so instead of just searching for the word, the words climate change anywhere in the article, I could search this as a title level. So that way I'm being a bit more specific. I'm going to get fewer results, but more relevant. And maybe I even want to add additional keywords. Like I'm interested in how uh, the ice caps may be melting and and what's happening with all that. So I could add ice melt. And here I'm gonna use a, um, a trick. Uh, it's one of the Boolean operators. When you add an asterisk at the end, uh, that would find you words uh, that start with melt, like melting or melts or melted. Um, so that's gonna give me more results and kind of grow them, my, my, make my search broader. And here I could determine that maybe I, were, I want these keywords at an abstract level. And I'm just going to run my search. Uh, maybe I just want results for the last few years. Choose 2012 and 2020 and click search. So right now I'm getting fewer results, right? Uh, you can see I was more specific with my search, with my criteria, which is good because you want to get those um, results that are relevant to your needs. And if this is something that I need to do pretty often, because it's related to my area of expertise, a project that I'm working on, um, maybe some something that I'm preparing for class, 
I may want to save search. So I could click here, save search. Um, every time I want to use some type of customization around my specific needs as user, um, the platform is going to ask me to log in. Uh, this login is independent from university credentials or subscriptions. This is something that any user could do independently anytime. We do encourage users to use their institutional email address as a best practice. Uh, but here I could just go ahead and log in. And that way, um, the platform is identifying myself. Like I am, um, it's seeing that I can see that I, my name is on the top right, Alejandra. And now I'm able to click here and save my search. And I could name my search in any way. Um, change March 2020. And I could choose to get alerts. So if I want to stay updated and get a notification every time there's one uh, additional result, right now I have five. If I have a sixth, I would get a notification either on a weekly basis or daily basis or monthly basis. Again, consolidating all those updates. Um, so I would only get one notification a week if there are three new articles, for instance. And I could click Save Search. So that's something that is really um, helpful. Um, and if I want to go back to that area, I could go to the uh, my account. So if you go to the top right corner, um, I can find my account. And if I go to my account, I see some personal information, etc. Um, if I scroll down and um, I want to bring your attention to the left side of the screen right now, you can see how I have my safe searches there at the very end of the menu. So I could click there and then I would find um, the latest search that I saved, which is climate change March 2020. Um, and these, again, the first benefit would be that ability of getting um, alerts so that I can stay up to date and I don't have to remember to go to the platform and run a search and see what's new. I'm just immediately notified. Um, and I could also come back here and if I want to access one of my previously saved searches, uh, then I could do that. So I can see that I have another search here that I saved back in January um, related to dentistry. So I may click here. And this is loading my search automatically without me having to type any of the keywords or remember my criteria if it was a little bit more um, complex. So it's an easy way of going back to, to that content. Um, another cool trick that I want to show you today is in case you're doing a little bit of research, preparing for a project or a presentation, and you're looking at different articles that could be interesting to you. Let's say that I run a search on cryptocurrency. Um, if I find, let's see, uh, let me do that again, please. So if I find the an article that I'm really interested in, here, and I may want to save this for, for the future, right? So I'm going to have the ability to either uh, download the PDF and print it or share it with others, send it to my email address. I have the entire article here in HTML version. Um, if somebody wants to access, typically articles are accessible in English um, because that's kind of the international language for, for publications. But if, um, if you're using Google Chrome and you want to access the content in a different language, you can always um, click on the right button um, of your mouse and then use the Google Translate to access other content in different languages. And um, as I was mentioning, something else you could do is under tools, add to favorites. So this is a way of saving or collecting those articles you're interested in for later. So I could click here and then it's going to be put um, together on my um, with my other favorite articles. So as you can see here, every time that you use those uh, kind of features, you're taken into your account um, to manage your alerts, your favorites, your safe searches. Um, and this is where you have um, everything. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you, um, and that would be the last uh, part of the of the live demo, would be for those of you who are administrators or librarians or have administrative rights at all, um, you could also go to um, the top right corner and go to institutional administration. And this is the area that is going to be relevant to you and to your needs. So um, here, if there's any new announcements, like new functionalities 
um, any type of um, news or updates for you, you're going to find them here. Um, so I can see here that uh, there's a new update about remote access um, uh, related to authentication, new alerts uh, for tokens, etc. So this is a good way of staying up to date with the platform for administrators. And on the left side, you see a menu where you can also access to usage reports, for instance. Um, here you're going to have some extra information about how to run reports if you have questions. Um, there's a usage reporting guide uh, right here that is going to help you navigate this. And here you have the ability to uh, run reports in Counter 5 or, or Counter 4. And you also have information related to the IP ranges if you want to modify anything in your setup um, or modify anything related to the institution branding, um, add more administrators, or access the bookstore. Um, so again, I'm happy to do a, another overview more specifically for administrators at a separate time. Today, we're not going to go into more details, but I hope this was um, a nice overview of all the functionalities, some of the cool tricks that you could learn um, for users when interacting with the content on the Wiley Online Library, and also getting an idea of what you can do as an administrator. Um, so let me go back to my summary here, kind of recapping what we've seen. Um, we browse some content, we run some searches, we've seen the filters that we can use to refine our search. We've also seen how to cite and export citations, and also how to use alerts. Uh, we've also seen how the latest content is going to be right there, and you can have access to early view. And finally, the administrator um, area. Last thing before we, I, I pass this on, um, it's going to be sharing my contact information, so if you have any questions, any requests, any feedback, um, anything, please let me know. I'll be, I'll be happy to, to read you and get back to you. All right, so that's, that's all I got. Thank you, Ali. Now we'll hear from Mary Margaret about some of the ways that you can facilitate and use your e-journal subscriptions with your EBSCOhost databases. I'll turn it over to Mary Margaret at this point. Hey, everybody. Um, I hope you can see my screen. Um, for linking. So I am going to piggyback on Ollie's um, presentation and just show you guys a very quick uh, live demo of EBSCO Smart Links Plus. So um, we saw the functionality of the Wiley. Uh -huh. We can't see your screen. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Let's see. Technical difficulties. Okay. How about now with better linking? Perfect. Perfect. Great. Sorry about that. Um, so we are going to look at Smart Links Plus, uh, something that is unique to EBSCO uh, as another way of getting to the Wiley content that you guys are subscribing to. For students that may prefer to start their search in an EBSCO host database, I want to demonstrate how easy it is for those students to be able to take advantage of the content in the community college package uh, via an EBSCO host search. So I am going to switch over. Okay, so we are in, hopefully uh, students are familiar with EBSCO host databases uh, in the academic world. And so I am going to just do a quick search in one of our most popular um, databases in the college um, market, our academic search database. So right now I am just in the basic search screen, but of course you have advanced search options as well. But I am going to run a search that up until um, a few weeks ago was a pretty relevant um, search, but now with everything that's going on, it's um, you know not quite as uh, pertinent today. But I'm going to just search for vaping and risks. Well, okay. Hmm. 
Okay. We're just going to do our search. And here we come to our results page. So if we see, we see PDF full text results um, at the top of our uh, results screen. PDF pull, uh, full text results are those results that are um, indexed or the full text is within your database. Um, then we also have link resolver results, but I wanted to go down to result number seven where we see linked full text. This is indicating that this is a smart link. So basically when we click on the linked full text icon, we are going to go directly to the publisher's platform and to the article level and see the result of that search outside of EBSCO's database content. But it's a seamless process so your end user does not have to uh, leave one interface and go to another interface. So as you can see with the linked full text, the smart link, um, I have actually linked directly out to the Wiley Online Library platform to the article level of my search result. And I see the same platform that Ollie was able to demo so well to us. And my student now has access to the most recent full text. And I want to, to just kind of emphasize this, that the databases are, are great and have a lot of content. But with the community college package and a subscription to that, you are subscribing to the most recent full text. Um, so your students are always guaranteed to have really good, relevant, and current search results. Um, so for example, this title, Addiction, this result comes from the 2019 um, issue. Now, this result would not show up if you did not have a subscription to the community college package because while it is included in the academic search database, that content is actually has a full text delay of 12 months. So with kind of hand in hand using the uh, community college package with your databases, it really opens up a lot of search results for the more recent full text for your students. And that is really what I think the goal for everyone is, is to get the most recent full text as quickly as possible and with, you know, the lack of clicks, so to speak. So that is what I wanted to show, um, just how easy it is. And like I said, it's something unique to EBSCO uh, that we uh, facilitate for you. So just a really nice way of demonstrating that students, depending on how they prefer to search, there are multiple ways to get to your Wiley, your very valuable Wiley content. So that was all I wanted to do to uh, demonstrate the smart link functionality. Um, but I know we are going to go to some questions. And so I will, oh, sorry about that. We're gonna go to the Q&A. Thanks guys. <laughs> You may. Now we're going to open the session up for questions. I have received a few questions to start with, but if you have not submitted a question and would like to, please enter them in your chat box at this time. One question I received was the Wiley Community College package requires a signed license agreement, correct? Are the benefits to having a license? What are the like? What are the benefits to having a license agreement? Um, several things. It does require a signed license agreement, but you do have multi-site access. You're going to have um, access back to 1997 to content. You're going to have all the all the journals in the Wiley collection, um, and you're also um, benefit from. Um, from all the linking that Mary Margaret talked about as well. Another question here, my library is currently ordering some Wiley titles. In order to purchase the package, will I have to keep subscribing to these titles? What if my current titles are subscribed to in print format? Uh, yes, you will be, uh, you will be um, required to maintain your current spin with Wiley or the titles that you do subscribe to. Titles that you have in print will now be offered to you electronically and deep discounts will be available 
if you want to maintain the print as well. Another one, uh, does Wiley add titles to the database models? If titles are added during my subscription term, would my students have access to any new titles? Yes, it will. And there's another one, if I am an EBSCO host database customer, is there any setup required to enable the smart links or the full text linking? No, there's not. That, that will happen automatically based on your subscription. I have a question about the price of the community college offer. It's $3,700 per year. Uh, the subscription can start at any point that you want it to, and it'll run 12 months from then. And one more, if titles are added or dropped from the database model during my subscription term, how would my library keep track of that? Uh, via EBSCOnet, which is your electronic serials management service, you'll be able to look at the e-journal updates, your package change report, uh, and, and also um, any, for any other changes that occur over that point in time. I have another one here. We currently have no Wiley subscriptions. This package will give us access to all journals in the package for the time of the sus subscription. Um, yes, um, I, I, I think I understand what you're asking. It, it is a, it's a database model, so it acts like a database. There is no perpetual access, but as long as you subscribe to the collection, you'll have access to all the Wiley content. All right, we have no additional questions. Um, you all feel free to uh, send an email if you like, uh, contact us when you get the link to this recording, if there are any additional questions, and we'll be happy to answer them. I want to thank everyone uh, for participating today, uh, for your questions and taking the time out of your day to attend this webinar. I hope you found the session in informative and engaging. Uh, the webcast will be archived, and we will send you an email when it is available. If we did not get to your questions today, we'll reach out to you soon. Thank you all again for your time and have a great day.